Thank you for being with us on the WHHI TV Daily News. With me now is Sheila Romaling, and she is, of course, the executive director of Fresh Start Healing Heart. And she is back to talk to us about the super important topic of conversation, which is trafficking. And lots of times when you're here, or I think we mentioned last time when you're here, that most people, when they think of trafficking, they think of sex trafficking. Yes. But there's all kinds of different things. And we did touch last time a little bit about labor trafficking, but we're going to talk about that specifically today. So mm -hmm. what do we need to be aware of? Well, with labor trafficking, um, you have situations where someone could owe a, a debt to someone, except they keep being charged more, and so they never get out of debt. Um, it could be that they are being abused in their workplace. They can't leave their workplace. Um, they are fearful to quit their job, uh, working extra long hours. And then it could be uh, um, those who are undocumented, where their passports and things are, their papers are being kept. Um, they're owing a large sum due to the fact that they were brought here through maybe smuggling first and then it became human trafficking. Um, and that's where now they're being forced to do things. Um, or they were promised a job that is totally different than the job they've been given. Right. So right. there's a lot of different things. And we have seen different situations here in the low country as well as part, all, all different parts of South Carolina. Wow. It's just amazing that it's just so pervasive. Mm -hmm. and. Obviously, that's such a shame. And so what, what industries lend themselves, lend themselves more to mm -hmm. the labor trafficking? Um, a lot of the times it's seen more in maybe the massage parlors, resorts, um, hotel situations, um, domestic servanthood. Okay. Um, it can be even into retail, landscaping, agricultural, yeah. um, technically anything. I mean, sweatshops, tobacco fields, you name it, it can be done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so what, what do we look, what should we look out for, you know, as, as we're out in the community and we are going to some of these businesses, what should we be looking out for as signs of somebody who is in trouble or who is in a trafficking situation? Um, one of the signs that's easiest to probably uh, figure out is generally if someone's working in an industry where they don't speak our language at all. Okay. Um, or the other would be that you maybe showed up in the morning, had coffee, and you show up late in the evening and you're having coffee and that same person is working. That might be an indicator that there's something going on. Someone who is afraid to talk to you, um, afraid to even look at you. Yeah. Uh, just, you can feel it. Just trust your gut. Yeah, That's right. what I say. Right. And if we do trust our gut and we kind of have that feeling, mm -hmm. what's the next step? Um, they can call local law enforcement. They can call us if they're not sure. If it's immediate danger, call law enforcement. Um, if it is they're just not really sure, they can call us and we can help to decipher the situation with them or they can call the national hotline as well. Okay. And before we started filming, you mentioned that you're going to be asking for a little bit of help from the community yes. to kind of continue to get this word out and continue to try and help as many people as possible. So what yes. what is it that you're looking for? Um, we currently have an ad out on the uh, radio that is helping us to target human trafficking survivors, victims at the time. And so we could really use sponsorships where okay. people, either a group gets together and sponsors one month, which is 668 a month, or five six people get together and do a hundred dollars a month for us it would be wonderful yeah well and so let's talk a little bit about that um, tell us you know tell the people about fresh start healing heart I know we've talked about it in the past mm -hmm. but it's always a good reminder to just what yeah. it is that you do for when you are rescuing these people from these situations we walk beside the survivors providing safe housing um, connective services for everything that they need so that they have full wraparound services and uh, counseling uh, basic needs that they need, so food, clothing, you know, everything they could possibly need, medical care, dental care. We, we pretty much take care of everything, and we have many community partners that help as well, so even legal. So. Yeah, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. And how, how long does somebody normally stay with you before then they go back out into society? Um, the program is set up that we walk beside them as long as they need us to, but when they're in-house care, meaning when they're in one of our host families, right. um, it's anywhere from 18 to 24 months. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, what a wonderful service it is. I know that you've seen lots of people mm -hmm. blossom after they've been with yes. you, which is yes. so great. So thank That's you for that. That's the best part yeah, of it all. I'm sure that it is. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that service. We appreciate it. And make sure that if you can, you're donating to help them spread the word. Thanks again, Sheila, for being here. Thank you for having me. Thanks to everyone on the show today for their insights and contributions. As always, our production team is behind the scenes to make all of this possible. And of course, we are honored that you have chosen to share a part of your day with us. I'm Betsy McDaniel, and we'll see you for the next WHHI-TV Daily News.